Hi, in this video I'm going to show how solar heat collecting panels can help provide supplemental heating in a house. On a sunny day, solar heat is collected behind thermal glass panels. A temperature sensor in this solar array goes to a controller. When the controller's set point is reached, it turns on a fan which draws the heated air through the system. The warm air goes through a heat duct, through a mechanical damper, and into the furnace plenum, and from there out into the house. It's a forced air heating system, so there is a cold air return through a filter and back into the other end of the uh, array. Now let's look at the physical components. This 10-inch round heating duct comes from one end of the collector array, goes across the top of the garage, and then goes down into the basement. Now picking it up down in the basement, that's the motor there, and we switch over to a 8-inch um, duct which goes across to the suspended ceiling in the basement to the furnace. It descends down into the furnace plenum. There's a damper in there which I'll show you in more detail later. This is a forced air type heating system and a forced air heating system has a um, cold air return. And that's it. There's a filter and a holder for the filter. Now we're going to follow the cold air return into the garage and into the attic where it snakes across the attic to the other end of the uh, collector array. And now we'll take a look behind the collector array where it's cut out here, insulation panels. It runs all the way from one end of the roof line to the other. And on this end is an important component, um, the uh, heat sensor. So I'm going to shimmy over here to the uh, heating end of this. And there's where the J thermocouple, a type of heat sensor that's used here, enters the array. Now let's move back down to the control end. There's the control box, a temperature controller, which is an Omron. And at the bottom, you can see where the thermocouple comes in. The top are the wires that control the motor. And there's a motor control relay, all working off household current. Okay, I'm going to take just a moment to show you the uh, damper at the plenum, which is another important component. And just have to take a couple of pieces of pipe off. The, um, the damper's custom made. I couldn't find anything that would fit this system quite right, so I had to kind of make something. And there's the damper just before it enters the plenum. When the collector comes on and starts providing heat, it blows the damper open. And when it's off, spring pulls it back, keeping the furnace heat into the, in the furnace. And from there, the solar heat is distributed throughout the house using the existing furnace heat ducts. And in a moment, I'm going to show you an operation cycle on a very cold, very sunny February day. February 15th, 2021, 11 below, 60 degrees up in the uh, solar collector. Let's see if this thing can provide some heat. And that layer of frost on the panels is gone. You're ready to do some work. It's still minus 8 at 10 o'clock an hour later, but our uh, ray is now at 97 degrees. And we're using a set point of 120 degrees. That's when the motor will come on and start delivering heat. Okay, one more hour of February sun. We're up to 118. We're getting close. We need to be 121 before it's going to kick on. Okay, here comes the collected heat. This is a pretty, pretty strong fan and noisy. As all that heat built up within the panels, it starts moving down. It will climb up a few degrees and before it starts coming back down. In February, up here at 45 degrees north latitude, is where this system will typically begin to work. On January and December, the sun angle is so low that you can get very little out of it. On a mid-February day like this, it's going to cycle on and off every 10 minutes. 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off, and it needs recovery time to build back up. And here you can see that the damper is open through the inspection window. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the run cycle, which is about 10 minutes, and we need 10 minutes to recover. And March is a very good month, as well as April. 
and on the other end, October and November are good heating months. And this system will run between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. typically. Now on a warm April day like this, 71 degrees, this system can provide some serious heat. Now as we're getting um, into the further into the heating season, we can bump the set point up and get it to deliver more heat. Okay, it's not rising. So we're going to take this back down to 125. So I'm just experimenting around to find the uh, set point at which this will uh, most effectively deliver heat. If you have the set point too low, it doesn't give the system a chance to build. And it'll run constantly at a lower temperature then. So if the goal is to deliver a higher heat, you need a higher set point. By early May, the uh, outside air temperature is increasing, and this thing's also producing more heat. It's in the 50s outside, and we can't hold our hand on there for long. Uh, here's a 70 degree day outside, and I'm just going to show just how warm this can get. And that's ouch warm. It's one in the afternoon, time to shut down for this part of the season. And in October, the sun angle returns to where it was in March, and it becomes favorable for some solar heating. We also get use out of the uh, system in November, not so much December and January. And it's time to get outside on this spectacular October solar day. Well, thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe for more interesting and useful videos.